Hey, how are you guys doing? So recently in one of my videos, the uh, Stewart's Theorem one, a commenter had asked if I was going to make some kind of a strategy video coming into this time near the test taking time. And so this is what I kind of had in mind. I'm not sure it's what they had in mind. Maybe they'll comment and let me know if this helps. Um, I'm calling this the home stretch. What's the home stretch? It's the last part of the race, okay? Um, if you're watching this right now, there is uh, today on Wednesday, uh, there is six weeks to test day November 10th. So this is going to be September, I think, 29th. Yeah, September 29th, you've got six weeks until the test. And so this is the home stretch. You're entering it right now. And between now and that test day or the, the B test, uh, that's going to determine whether or not you meet your goals. So um, I'm going to start with a quote here, and I didn't get this quote from my former boss, but a uh, little do you, some of you know, I actually worked at McDonald's for a few years after high school. Um, I know people mock those kinds of uh, jobs and things like that, but you really shouldn't. Um, the people who work there are people too, and they're just trying to get where they're going in life. Um, so uh, I actually liked it. Um, I know that some may be worse than others, but I had a great boss there who taught me a lot about work ethic, working with the team, good business practices, understanding your value to the business and how uh, you can you know, become a better uh, work, work worker and climb your way up into you know, management positions and things like, like that. So learning how businesses function, I actually learned a lot about that from working there and I'm grateful for that time. And uh, it was well worth my time. I'm not saying that every McDonald's is going to be the same way, um, but a lot of them are pretty well run. I don't know about other fast food restaurants as well, uh, but regardless of which, uh, I enjoyed it. So uh, my boss there, he taught me a lot about work ethic. And one of the things that he had talked about was, for example, it's just an example. I and mean, if you're the closing manager, I was a manager there, and if I was the closing manager and the opening manager comes the next day, and they've got like an hour to get the store ready and get things started, and there's a number of things the closing manager does to help the opening manager out who has a limited staff in the morning as well, and if you don't get those things done, their shift doesn't run smoothly and they're gonna be disappointing customers and clients um, on the flip side in the morning. And so when they come in, if they don't even look at the schedule, there's kinds of two, two things that they could see. One would be, man, nothing is stocked up. Things were not cleaned properly. The tables are dirty. Now they've got to have one of their staff members go out and do a hot and soapy, you know, clean the tables. They got to restock things. It's putting them behind uh, the eight ball, so to speak. Are they going to come in and go, man, you know, this looks horrible. It's kind of, this is so bad. I know who closed last night. That guy did. You know, and that's what they're thinking, right? Because they can tell from the quality of the workmanship who was the previous night's closer. Conversely, would you rather they come in and say, man, everything is immaculate, everything's in its place. It's so easy to open this morning because of the job the closing manager did the night before. I know exactly who closed last night. There's only one person who does that kind of work and it was this guy, right? Or, you know, if you're a girl, you're a girl, right? But for me, you know, guy. So. Um, this is a quote that I found a while back. It comes from Ted Key, who was a cartoonist. It's sometimes misattributed to Vince Lombardi, and it's in the vein of that. And it says, every job is a self-portrait of the person who did it. Autograph your work with excellence. And it's true. When you hand in your work to your teacher, you don't think they can see things about who you are as a person, your character, your integrity, what you represent right? When they look at your work, is it disorganized and messy? Nothing's well written. What does that say? Right? And it's kind of, what do you want to be, right? A good student or a bad student? I mean, if you want to be a good student, what does that look like? It, it looks like you're putting forth effort. It looks like you care. You take notes during class. You get your homework done. You pay attention. You ask relevant questions, right? So, if you're not doing that, and there's reasons why maybe you're not able to perform those duties. We all have different struggles in our lives at different times, and maybe you were going through something at some period that didn't enable you to perform at that level, okay? But the question you wanna ask is, which one do you wanna be seen as when people discuss your performance? And so when they look at your work, right, that's a self-portrait of who did it, just like my boss told me back then about the store work, right? The opening manager can see who closed the night before based only on what the, the work looks like, right? And your teachers can do the same thing, right? And so right now, between now and the test, that's your work, that's your preparation, right? And that's gonna tell you who you are, 
right? Who are you, right? Are you ready? Do you really want to qualify for Amy? Really? Do you just want the accolade? You want people to praise you? You want to praise yourself, feel good about yourself? Or do you actually want to be the champion? Do you actually want to reach to that level that you've been trying to attain? Because they're two different things. If you just want to feel the good feelings that go with that, then fine. You just desire what most humans desire. But if you actually want to get there, you're going to have to put in the work, right? And that work starts now. There's six weeks to test day, okay? And so that brings me to another quote. This one's actually from me. Technically, it's not fully mine. It's really just built upon things I've heard over the years that I found insightful. I really like quotes. Uh, quotes help me process. I try to read one or two a day. There, there's good things, maybe one or two a week, I guess. Um, there's things that can be inspiring in there that help us to think. There's many smart people who came before us who said some good things that can help us to figure out what we're doing and how to get there. And so um, I kind of put this together. It says, there is not what was, nor what will be. There is only what is now and what you're going to do about it, right? And so what does it mean? Well, what was is the past. You might be sitting here today and saying, man, I said I was going to prepare all summer and then I didn't. I was playing that game or I was just hanging out with friends or I was just doing whatever I, because I couldn't because, and there's all these reasons and that's fine. That's in the past though. There is nothing that can be done about that. You can feel bad about it and you can sit there and hurt your current mood based on your past inactivity, but that doesn't change anything about the current reality at all. It just ruins your current mood and that's it. And so then there is only what is now, right? There's not what will be. What will be is the future, right? If you're like, oh, I'm going to qualify for Amy or I'm going to get to the next level, USAMO, whatever it might be, you can say that all you want and that's great. But if you live too much just thinking that's definitely going to happen and I don't need to work too hard, then you might not actually make those goals, right? Instead, take a self-assessment. Where are you right now? Because that's what is now. There is now six weeks until the test. And the question is, what is it you're going to do about it? Not tomorrow, not next week. You can do all that. Yes, that's great. But what are you going to do today? What are you going to do immediately? That's where you need to live. That's where you need to exist in your mind in the now. Okay. So that's what this is about. So what do we do? We make a plan, right? Have a plan, right? I've got a plan on my channel talking about, uh, you know, how to prepare for the AMC 10 and 12, a plan. Is that in every person's, you know, every single person that works perfectly for it? No, I say it in the video. You're going to have to modify it to fit you. It's a generic skeleton plan. Take from it what you want and then use the things that you can use and don't use the others, right? It's just a universal kind of one size fits all approach. But in reality, just many people will tell you this, solve thousands of problems, right? Just keep solving. If it's not, you don't have AOPS books, do past tests. Have you done every past AMC 10 and 12? No, get to it. Have you done Alchemist? Alchemist is a great free resource. They have questions up to Amy level difficulty. You could utilize that to your advantage to help shore up your weaknesses. It's divided by topic, right? Play through the controls on there. I forget exactly how it works, but you can select the difficulty, the topic, all of those kinds of things. Practice 30 minutes a day so you don't get to it one day. Do it the next day. Do it on the weekends. Whatever you have time for, get to it, okay? Um, execute. Whatever your plan is, make your plan. Don't spend forever making the plan. The most important thing is the action, okay? So finally, live with the results, right? What are you going to be saying on November 11th? What do you want to say? Do you want to feel like, man, I got it done. I, I felt good about this. I think I made it. I think I got the score I wanted. Or do you want to be disappointed in yourself and kick yourself and say, oh, I wish I would have done this, this, and this in the past. Well, right now is what you determine what you're going to feel on November 11th or whenever you figure out what your score was, right? Now's the time you determine that. So question what it is you want to feel like then and make the plan that's going to allow you to feel that way at that time. Now, to be honest, just because you put in the work, there's no guarantee you're going to qualify. I'm sorry. Life doesn't work that way, right? A different sports teams put in all the work and they still fail to win the championship. That's, that's how things go. But you can do the best that you can do. I'll be totally honest. There's a whole bunch of mathematicians way more accomplished than me. They're way more talented than me. Some of them are on YouTube. Some of you are watching this video right now. You're going to accomplish way more mathematically than I ever did. And that's fine. You can reach the pinnacle of what you are able to achieve. And that's what I want all of you to do. Reach the best you can do. 
The best you can do might not be the best somebody else can do because we're built differently. We have different situations in our home lives. We have different surrounding communities. We have different access to resources. We're different people, right? And so some people got an earlier start. Don't worry about all of that. You do the best that you can do. And so in that vein, I pulled up this quote from Lindsey Vaughn. She's a famous U.S. skier, now retired. And this was recorded in 2018 at the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. Um, she had already won a gold medal in the past. And this was going to be her final Olympics. And she was quoted as saying, It was tough to contemplate this being my last Olympic downhill, Vaughn said afterward. I struggled to keep my emotions together, but I left it all on the mountain like I said I would. The famous quote among sports athletes, leave it all on the floor, leave it all in the field, all on the mountain as she sees a skier. You leave it all on the test. Right? Give it your all to the best that you can, and then you're going to be satisfied with the results, regardless of whether you maybe get to the pinnacle of your sport or not. And she says, I gave it all today. I skied a great race. Sophia just skied better than I did. That's okay. People are going to outperform you. You're not the best in the world. Sorry. Well, maybe one of you is, but the rest of us are not. Okay? And so what she says, um, I thought I executed the line really well on the whole course, perhaps too well. I tried too hard to stay on the perfect line. This is the key quote, but I have no regrets. You want no regrets? Then give it everything you've got. You've got six weeks to get there. The last thing I'm going to mention is another uh, quote from the book that I read. It came out in 2014 from Ryan Holiday. I'll leave it in the uh, description of the video. And you guys, maybe you can use this stuff. Maybe you can't. For me, this stuff helps. For you, maybe it doesn't. We all get different mileage from different things that people say. And so uh, this is called The Obstacle is the Way. And the basic thing about it, it says it's the ancient art of turning adversity into advantage. So we all have setbacks and things to deal with. I've had a number of them this year, right? And so these things become obstacles in our path. And there's kind of a, a philosophy behind this called Stoic philosophy about how we utilize that obstacle to make ourselves get farther ahead than we would have been otherwise. And that's why it's called The Obstacle is the Way. It's a quote from Marcus Aurelius in the year 170. Um, I highly recommend getting into philosophy. There's a lot of great things that people who came before us have said and thought that really empowers us today to live better lives. Right? And so um, he wrote here in the foreword, the pre preface, not to an audience or for publication, but to himself, for himself. This is what Aurelius wrote this to himself. It was a journal, right? And what he wrote is undoubtedly one of history's most effective formulas for overcoming every negative situation we may encounter in life. A formula for thriving, not just in spite of whatever happens, but because of it. And here's the quote. Our actions may be impeded, right? The obstacle. But there can be no impeding our intentions or dispositions because we can accommodate and adapt. The mind adapts and converts to its own purposes the obstacle to our acting, right? The, op the thing that's blocking us. And here comes the money quote. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. And so what's that talking about? This test is kind of in a way an obstacle. It's not quite the um, adversity, if you will, but it is an obstacle in our path to where we're trying to get. Ask yourself right now, would you know everything mathematically that you'd currently know if it wasn't for you preparing for this test? No, and that's kind of why they made it, to advance interest in mathematics. And by you participating in that, look at how much you've grown through art of problem solving books, through math, uh, competition math communities and, and competition enthusiast groups and things like that. This kind of content has helped you to grow your skill in thinking about things in a mathematical and logical way. And in the same way, this preparation that lies before you right now, the upcoming test, that's your obstacle. You can use it to advance yourself or you can have regrets on November 11th. The choice is kind of up to you. I hope this video helps you guys. It's not necessarily going to be directly about a math strategy, but more so an overall strategy to get to where you want to go. And so that's all I've got for you. I hope you guys get your goals achieved this year. Let me know how you did in the, in the uh, aftermath, of course. And if you don't get there, then try again next year. That's just kind of how it works. We just keep going. Life keeps going. The sun keeps coming up, right? Go back, look, reevaluate, try again. All right, you guys have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.